Hey, it's good to see you. Happy Thursday. I'm sorry this is so late. It's just been one of those days where I try to get a whole lot done in the day and I, God, it's 10 o'clock at night. I didn't realize. I'm, I meant to start this earlier. It just didn't happen. I do apologize. I hope your day has been good. I'm sitting in front of the heater because I'm chilly. I do this a lot. I, I sit on the floor in my room. I have a little space heater here, and I just, I don't know. I've done this since I was a kid. I've talked about it before. It's one of my favorite things to do in the wintertime. When I was growing up, we lived in this little, old, single-wide trailer that was built back in the 60s, and it had no insulation, really, and I had this tiny little room. I mean, tiny little room in this trailer, and um, there was, it was always cold in there in the wintertime. It was always freezing cold. Uh, the only heat we had for most of my childhood was a wood-burning stove in the living room and that and there was a pipe, you know, go, a chimney going out. You know, my dad built the stove. He constructed everything about it. Um, he's very good at that kind of stuff. Anyway, so my room was on the far end down there and it was always freezing in there. Well, my mom let me have, she got this little blue space heater. Now she said you have to be very careful with this thing. Don't put anything on it, around it. You know, don't, you know, you have to give it plenty of space. And I would sit right in front of it because it was tiny and it didn't put out much heat. But if I found that if I sat right in front of it, I could kind of stay warm and I would wrap up in a blanket and I'd have on socks and, you know, a sweatshirt and thick pants and just, I was just cold. I'd spend all winter in front of that thing if I could. And I would sit there and read or listen to the radio or draw or just, you know, whatever. Whatever I could do without having to get out from in front of that thing. And even today at 49, I still enjoy just sitting in front of the heater. There's just something so comforting about it. And I'll sit here and work on my story. Like I've got, oh shit, well it was under here. It's not, actually, it's right there. I had to move it earlier. Um, I'll sit here and work on that. I'll sit here and listen to a podcast or color I was working on this earlier just whatever and it's kind of a way to unwind at the end of the day I'll just kind of sit here and I do this a lot before I start a video just to kind of clear my head and just forget about whatever and kind of get in a better frame of mind to make a video because I don't want to be all stressed out because that stress will be in my voice I try to just get over it you know like just relax I well, already did a video today, so I don't have to do that, but uh, I do have to take a shower and go to bed pretty soon because I am kind of tired. But, um, so, earlier, my my younger son, now I'll, if you have kids, don't you love this? They come to you, oh, I need a thing for school tomorrow. What do you need? Uh, uh, this random thing that you're going to have to go to three stores to find because the first two you go to are not going to have it. How long have you known about this? Uh, two weeks and you need it in the morning now there have been times my kids have done that and I've said well you're just gonna do without or you can make do with something we got here if you've known about it this long you need to let me know and you need to learn you're gonna have a consequence for this action of not letting me know I'm not gonna run out and I'm not gonna drop everything and go out and get it it's not gonna happen you can just find something here that will work or not but maybe next time when you find out you need something you need to tell me and they're they're pretty good about it. They they really are. But he uh he volunteered to bring snacks. There's just after school. There's like a, a an academic club that he belong that he goes to on Fridays after school. And apparently he signed up to bring snacks. I need some snacks. I said, well, shoot, what'd you sign up to bring? Hot Cheetos. We don't have any hot Cheetos. I started to say, look, we got. A box of vanilla wafers and graham crackers in there from Aldi that I just bought. Take that. <laughs> just take that shit. I don't feel like going to the store. I don't have any nasty ass hot Cheetos. I signed up to bring hot Cheetos. Can you please get some? He said, you know, just, can you please, you know, like after your class, before you come home, can you just stop and get some, please? So I said, all right, fine. Because I already, my, my older son asked me a couple days ago, and this is my fault. I kind of forgot about it. He reminded me today. He wants a Santa hat. He said, Mom, do we have a Santa, like a Santa hat? You know, like a red and white Santa hat. I said, I think so. He said, can I please borrow it? I want to wear it to school from now till winter break. 
I said, okay, apparently he and some of his friends are wearing Santa hats to school. I said, okay, uh, let me go up in the attic and I'll see if I can find it. But this was at night when he first brought it up. I said, tomorrow I will go up in there and I will look for it. And, I, and then I proceeded to forget all about it. So he reminded me, actually he reminded me yesterday, did you find the Santa hat? I said, I forgot all about it. He said, can you please, please look for it? Um, please, because I did tell him I had one. No need to go get one. I think I got one. So today I did go up in the attic and I went through a bunch of totes of Christmas stuff and I found a pink one and I texted him and said, you want the pink one? He's like, no. What's, it's a Santa hat. You said you wanted a Santa hat. He said, just like a red and white one. Just a plain, you know. I said, but this one has sequins on it. It's really pretty. <laughs> no, Mom. A red and white one. I do not want a pink Santa hat with sequins on it. I'm just offering. Like, I'm trying to help. It's very cute. I don't appreciate you, you know, dissing my Santa hat. <laughs> it's very feisty. And then I found this elf hat. It's like red and green stripes, and it's really long. It goes, like, halfway down your back. I found this. He goes, no, I don't want to wear that. Please, can you keep looking, please, and let me know if you don't find one. So I had to tell him when he got home. I said, I didn't find it. I went through everything I could find to go through. I couldn't find it. I, I know I had at least one, just red and white Santa hat. But then I got to thinking, I uh, got rid of a bunch of Christmas stuff last year. It was either while I was putting out Christmas stuff or after or when I was putting it away at some point I, I took a bunch of it to like Goodwill or something I got rid of a bunch of stuff and it could be that it was in amongst the stuff I got rid of I, I honestly don't know so I told him um, I, I didn't find it but what I'll do is after after my exercise class this evening I will go and see if I can find you one he said I would really appreciate that thank you so I went to, I decided I would go to Lowe's Foods. So I went to Lowe's Foods. They didn't have one. So I went to Publix. And I'm going to tell you something. Publix, Publix is a damn Grinch. And it, I'm walking around in this store and I'm thinking of that odious song, Do They Know It's Christmas Time At All? You know, Yoko, on, is that, that's not Yoko. Who is that? Some sanctimonious, self-righteous, gas bag but I can't think of who it is do they know it's Christmas time at all and I'm not I'm not trying to start an argument I just the song has always to me just come across as self aggrandizing or something but I criticize a lot of Christmas songs it's not just that one don't get me started on Christmas shoes have you heard that song I hate that song I was glad last year I didn't hear it even one time that and if you like it I apologize but this is my opinion of the song you know what they say about opinions and what they're like, and everybody's got one. That song, Christmas Shoes to me, is the most over-the-top, sappy, god-awful song that anybody ever, ever created. And then they made a movie about it. Dear God, I, I never saw, I do not, oh God. I have a lot of questions about Christmas Shoes, and I have a lot of comments but I will not say them. I will just keep them to my... My kids have heard my, my monologue about the, the Christmas Shoes song, about all the problems I have with this song, and the things that go on in this song. Don't get me started on damn Christmas Shoes. How did I get off on that? No, the reason I was thinking, do they know it's Christmas time at all when I was at Publix? If you were to walk around in Publix right now, you'd think it was any time other than Christmas. There was no Christmas shit in there at all. Like nothing. I saw one display with what looked like Christmas cookies. Sort of. But yet the, it's, it's cookies that you could probably get any time. Like the sugar cookies with that thick icing on them. They had some that were red and green. But they have those all the time. The only Christmas crap I found in there, there was one freestanding cardboard kiosk from Hallmark that had a few little bags on them like gift bags that had poinsettias on them. That was literally it. Do they know it's Christmas time at all? There is no freaking holiday cheer in this whole damn place. The store is sparkling. It's beautifully appointed. It's lovely. Where's all the Christmas shit? And I understand if you don't celebrate Christmas and, and that. I'm not, I'm, I am not trying to start anything with anybody. 
it's just sort of a shock. And I'm going, well, ain't no Santa hats in here. That's for damn certain. So I thought, well, while I'm here, I'll go ahead and get the hot Cheetos for the thing. There were no prices on these chips. All the Doritos, Cheetos, whatever, Lay's, Ruffles, there were no prices. And I guess if you have to ask how much they are, then obviously you can't afford it. I got that bag of Cheetos, hot Cheetos, party size. And I got up to the self-checkout and I whooped it across the thing. Do you have any idea how much that bag of damn hot Cheetos was with tax? It was like $6.75 for that bag of hot Cheetos. I about bit my own tongue off. I thought I was going to be sick. I didn't even have to eat the hot Cheetos to feel sick. I paid it damn near $7 for a bag of hot Cheetos. And no Christmas, no, no Santa hats. Shit. Anyway, I was thoroughly irritated. But I will say, the one thing I like about Publix, it's a lovely store. It's lovely. It's just fine. Um, I like it better than Harris Teeter because I've noticed that when you walk into Harris Teeter, for some reason, most of the locations when you walk in, you get hit with the smell of fish. It just... Am I the only one that's noticed that? Because I've mentioned it to several people before, and most of them say they never noticed it. When you walk in, it just smells like fish in there. Just, And the seafood and butcher shit is in the back, so why you're smelling fish... Right when you walk in the door, I don't know, but it's a strong fishy smell, and I really don't like it. And it just kind of lingers in your nose the entire time you're in the store, and the store just smells funky to me. Maybe it's the smell of pretension. I don't know, but I don't prefer to, I don't really like to pay like 50% more for my groceries than I do at Aldi or Walmart, so I don't really shop there. The only time I go there is if they have a really good sale on their uh, sodas. They don't really do that anymore. They used to do this thing, and I have the little customer card thing, you know, and I get the emails. And what they used to do with their 12 packs of Pepsi products or Coke products, they would do a sale every now and then, buy two, get three free, which was a hell of a deal. They don't really do that anymore. They might do like buy one, get one free, but their their prices are so high that buy one, get one is about what I would pay for this. That's about what I would pay for them at Walmart. It's not really a savings, and it's not worth going to Harris Teeter for. What was I saying? Oh, the one thing I really like about Publix is it doesn't have that, it doesn't smell like fish. It's perfectly fine. It doesn't stink in there, which is nice. They have really good sourdough bread back in their bakery. It is, it is delicious. They have super good sourdough bread. It's very good, and it's not terribly expensive either, and it's really yummy. So I will give them credit for that. Their sourdough bread is great. So I didn't find a Santa hat there. And I thought, well, crap, I, really, I was really kind of hoping to come home with a Santa hat. How hard can it be to find a Santa hat this time of year? Apparently it's damn hard. Well, no, I, technically I did find some Santa hats. I did. I stopped by a local Dollar Tree. And I went in, and I'm walking around in there, and it was pouring down rain. I was already grouchy because I had, it was, when I got out of my exercise class, it was pouring rain outside. And I'm soaking wet. It's the kind of rain that as soon as you go out in it, you're just soaked, like, instantly. So I am, I've got on my puffy coat, and my coat is all soaked. My hair's wet. I'm grumpy. And, you know, the store's like, it is not Christmas time in here. And I know everybody doesn't celebrate Christmas, and it is not all about Christmas. But it's just kind of a shock, because every other store around here, it looks like Santa Claus blew up in there. But you go into... You're in the Publix, ain't shit going on in there out of, out of the way. Like, it's just normal crap. Damn Publix. Ebenezer Scrooge runs that place. He's not interested. A whole bunch of frilly, frou-frou, bah humbug in there. No Santa hats at all. But I bet if I had found one, it would have been like $27. So, I wouldn't have bought it anyway. I would have scoffed at that price and got my $7 bag of hot Cheetos and left. Um, So... I'm in Dollar Tree and I'm walking around and it was still pouring rain and I was surprised because it was packed. There were so many people in there. It was so crowded. And I'm walking around and I'm looking at all the Christmas stuff like there's got to be Santa hats in here somewhere. Got to be. 
gotta be. And finally, I came around this little corner and they had this little freestanding kiosk thing there and they had stockings on it. I thought, I feel like I'm getting warmer. Here we have stockings. We have like Santa scarves. We have, you know, just stuff like that, little Christmas tree skirts. Like, I feel like I'm getting warmer. And I turned the corner and there's a whole bunch of Santa hats. I said, finally, yay, Santa hats. And I picked one up and I looked at it and it looked like it might have fit a five-year-old. I thought, oh, these must be the child size Santa hats. No, it was the adult size. They were tiny. They were tiny. And one thing I am very good at is, well, I'm good at two things. Well, several things. We can't say everything I'm good at. I'm good at cussing, disappointing my mother, and producing children with gigantic heads. I love my kids. They can't hear me. Both of my children, when they were born, their head circumference, both of them, was in the 100th percentile. They have enormous heads. Dude, I don't know. Just imagine what that was like. Thank God for the epidurals, all I got to say. So, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to my son, like, he will never get this on his head because it's not stretchy at all. Hell, I couldn't have gotten it on my head. It was a tiny hat. This... And it said it was adult size. I'm like, this is not, no, it isn't. This is like child size. Hell, my children couldn't have worn this when they were, you know, small. Damn it. Maybe they could have worn it when they were first born. Big old noggin. But they grew into it. They're, they're fine. They don't have, they don't look like lollipops or anything like that. They're fine. They do have big heads. I don't know, man. But my mom always told me when I was a kid that my head was too big for my body. She did tell me that my head was out of proportion to the rest of me. Maybe I grew into it. I don't know, but she, I was always very, very self-conscious about my head. And then when I had two kids with big old heads, and they didn't have hydrocephalus or anything like that. They just had big old heads. I said it was because they were so smart. I said, you know why? It's that big old brain. They're so dang smart. I, I, I produced smart children. Yes, I did. And they are smart. They're very smart. Very smart boys. Um, where the hell was I going with that? So I couldn't get a hat. Like, well, I could get a hat. I could buy it, but he couldn't wear it unless we, like, cut a hole, cut a slit in the back and put some elastic in it. He couldn't wear this hat. So I had to come home with my damn near $7 bag of hot Cheetos I tell my, my older son, I'm sorry, I couldn't get your hat. They had some, but they were way too little. And they had a, they had a bunch of them. They had tons of these hats, but they were tiny. Little tiny hats. Not stretchy at all. So then I had to make dinner. So we had, my younger son wanted chicken. So I made some chicken and he wanted grilled cheese. So I made grilled cheese sandwiches. My older son wanted grilled cheese and pizza. So I did that. Um, and I kind of, I had a grilled cheese sandwich and a whole bunch of gummy bears because I have no self-control sometimes. And I was still grouchy because I, I got wet running around trying to find stuff and I was frustrated because I couldn't find the hat. And I'm still thinking, you know what? It's up there somewhere in the attic in a tote that I didn't look in because I didn't look in all of them. Some of them had a bunch of stuff piled on them and I didn't feel like moving at all. Like, man, I don't know. I am not worried about it. I think tomorrow I will continue my search for a Santa hat because I got to go. I got to go do a couple things around town tomorrow. So maybe in my travels, I can stop at a couple of other places to try to find one. Oh, you know what? I bet Christmas tree shops has has. I mean, if they don't, if Christmas tree shops does not have Santa hats, I give up. I need to go there. So maybe I will. I don't know. What else happened today? Oh, I had. Gosh, how many cats did I have come by today? I, I put out some food this morning. I almost got close enough to Wallix to, to like pet her. I wouldn't have because it would have freaked her out. So Wally came in this morning. He didn't stay inside last night. He's been staying away for the last few nights. I think he's sleeping in the doghouse in the, in the yard next to me. And also sometimes he sleeps. I've got a little house on the side, on the side porch of a house. Like It's like a small pet house, you know. He sleeps in there sometimes, and it hasn't been terribly cold at night, so I'm not super duper worried about him. But anyway, he comes around first thing in the morning, and he'll stand by the sliding door back there, and I'll let him in, and he'll come in and eat and hang out with me. Um, he really, though, he likes to wait until the kids leave for school to come in. I don't know why. 
he he I think because once they're gone it's quiet in the house and he really likes his peace and quiet he doesn't like a lot of noise and people walking around and I think it makes him nervous so once they're gone he'll come in and just he'll just lay under the dining room table and sleep and every now and then he'll he'll look up just to see if I'm still there and he'll just go back to sleep and it's very sweet but he came in now we have a lot of different cats in the neighborhood and, and we've come up with some names for these cats okay I can't remember that there's there hang on okay so he came in and right after he came in I happened to look out and there's Wallex now okay my younger son called her Wattage I, I could have thought he called her Wallex Anyway, this cat is called Wallex. She's like a British short hair. She's kind of a beigeish orange color. She does have on a collar. And she's sitting there looking in like, but she's very scared. She's very skittish. If you try to get near her, she'll run away. But she knows I have food and she was hoping I would put some food out. She's always very hungry. I don't know where she lives, but I don't think whoever has her feeds this cat. I mean, they just, she is always starving. So, um, so I came up to the door, and when I went to open it, of course, she ran away. But she doesn't go as far as she used to. She'll go, like, 10 feet away, and she'll watch me, you know. And I, I had a bowl of food, and I kind of shake it, like, Hey, you want a food? You want some food, kitty? And she started to approach. She actually, she hadn't really done that before. And I went to set it down, and I could have, she was so close, I could have reached out and petted her, but I didn't want to scare her, so I didn't do it. But like, wow, she's never gotten that close to me before that's crazy but I didn't want to mess it up like if you try to pet her she's gonna run away and it's gonna freak her out don't touch her so I put her food down and she ate she ate, ate like half the bowl she ate a whole bunch and then she left and then like five minutes later I look out there there's another cat totally different cat eating the food this gray about the size of boot this gray striped cat eating the food really pretty little cat. My younger son came up with a name for him, and I can't remember now what it was. I don't know, but he came up with a name. So this cat ate, and Boop saw the, this cat. The Boop is okay with Wallex. He doesn't really, she doesn't really care. This is other cat came up, and Boop just happened to walk by and see it, and was like, oh, hell no. And she starts growling and hissing, and the cat can hear her, and it's hissing at her, and like, y'all, y'all quit. you like people on the internet. Shut the hell up. You know damn well if I open this door, y'all will both run in opposite directions. Just shut up. So, but Boop, I, I don't even know what the hell she was thinking. So, she's hissing, and, I, and so I'm trying to work. Like, I'm at my desk trying to work. Like, y'all shut up. And I turn back around, and I'm working, and my younger son was in there. And Boop backs, she takes several steps back charges at the sliding door and like rams herself into the sliding door like she thought she could bust through it or something like and she just sort of bounced off the door i said cat what in the hell she thought she could bust through that sliding door i said cat that damn glass is like that thick you're not getting through that door she didn't care she was mad she really wanted to get that cat that so the gray striped cat also has a collar on and it was very hungry and it ate the rest of the food so then after that cat left I brought in the empty food bowl I put a little bit more food in it and at some point during all this Wally went out like he's like it's too noisy I gotta go so he went out we have different voices for all our cats too and uh, so then I put food out there and then like 30 minutes later I'm still working and I happen to glance over there's another cat there is a gray cat with little white socks. It has little white feet. I've seen this cat before. It actually lives like at the end of the street. I, but I've never seen it in my backyard. Like Wally is telling everybody to come here to eat. <laughs> Damn it, Wally. But we had um, we had chicken tonight, and I had some leftovers. Like I trimmed away, you know, I cooked it all and trimmed away the parts, you know, like the fat and stuff, and put it on a plate out there, and so somebody could eat it that way. I don't have to waste it, and somebody can enjoy it. So. Yeah, I don't know. So I had one, two, three extra cats come by in addition to the three and a half cats I already have. Like, I have, I've become the damn cat lady. I am the cat lady. I feed all the cats. I just hate the thought of the cat being hungry like that, so. Yeah, it's almost 1030. I really need to, to get off of here, but 
Um, thank you so much for being here. I hope your Thursday was great. Tomorrow is Friday, if that's exciting. For some people, it's not, because, like, if you work on the weekends, like, doesn't really mean anything. It's, uh, it's exciting for me. What am I doing this weekend? I don't know, honestly. I don't, I don't think I'm actually, I don't think I have any plans this weekend, which is fine. There's a good chance, though, that they're going to be doing my siding maybe this coming week. I did talk to the side. The, it's not Paradise. It's a totally different company. Hopefully, they will be putting up my siding this coming week. They said it will depend on, you know, they've had a lot of rain this week. They said if, we get, if we're not able to complete our work on another job this week, we may not be able to get to it. I said that's fine, you know, as long as we get it done. So I'm I'm next up. So it depends on how how much they were able they'll be able to get done this week as to whether or not they can make it here next week. But they will be putting up unprimed or I'm sorry primed hardy board that I will then have another company paint to match the back. And I already know who I want to do it because they do a damn good job and they'll they will knock it out of the park. They they are they kick ass. Um, so that may be happening next week. They said it'll be a two-day job. We'll see how that goes. I honestly don't know. I'm scared. I'm scared. But it's got to be done. I mean, like, my masonite is literally crumbling off the house. It's, I mean, it's got to be done. So I just have to bite the bullet and hope for the best. Um, I think this will be a better experience. I dare say it can't possibly be any worse than what I went through with the crap on the back of the house. I think it will be better. I hope so anyway. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, if I find a hat tomorrow, I will show it to you. I'll probably be, probably be very proud of it. It just has to be a plain red and white sand hat. He doesn't want anything crazy. Just a plain hat. And I know damn well I have at least one. But I either got rid of it with a bunch of other stuff or it's buried up there in a tote and I don't feel like digging it out. So, I'm going to get ready for bed. I'm tired. But thank you so much for being here again. Um, happy Thursday. And I hope you have a great day and night and evening and everything in between. And I'll see you again soon.